This video is brought to you by Longoni Cues. Yeah! Hi pool players, this is Terminator. Welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. As you can see, I'm back home and I'm still over the moon from the Euro Tour win in Austria. In this video, I want to walk you through the process of how I won that event, nine matches in a row, the ups and downs, the whole works, and also the four biggest takeaways, mentally and physically, what you can do to win an event like this. So stay tuned to the end, watch the entire thing, because there's a lot of solid information in this one. Let's get it going. This event meant so much to me. This is the plaque for 2016, the last Euro Tour I won. I thought it was actually in Austria versus Filler, but it was one later in uh, Holland Lane that was the last Euro Tour I won, my 10th. And I had to wait six long years for a number 11 with this guy right here. I thought in the end it would never happen again because there's so many good players right now. If you ask any of the Euro Tour winners of the last five years, they're gonna all tell you how tough it is to win a Euro Tour. Even Shane came over a bunch of times. In the end, he finally succeeded and won one, but it's only getting tougher. To qualify, you have to play already super good for the last 32 and then to win one, you got to play super good, get a little lucky, and also be mentally super tough. The event started for me in round one versus Dörner from Germany and round two versus Lagunas Moreno from Spain. Pretty convincing wins there. Good solid warm-up matches, had to play good. I was missing a little bit of match rhythm there. I came back from the World Cup of Pool with Mark. Doubles tournament, played three matches in a week and then came home and unfortunately my sparring partner Mickey Krause he couldn't practice those days so I had to do some solo work and I could feel the match rhythm was lacking a bit and my break was also not really like I wanted it. So before my only match on day two versus Gutenberger from Austria I went to the pool room for a couple of hours practiced my break for a full hour and then did another hour of work well, that didn't help that much right away because me and Gutenberger played one hell of a close match and that proves a point right away that in these events you're not going to play your A game every single match. Sometimes you need a little bit of luck to get across that finish line. Gutenberger me went 8-7 to him when in the end he missed a crucial 8 ball on the side. I could clear that rack. He broke dry on 8-8, left me an open table, and I ran out for a 9-8 really close victory to put me in the fourth round. I remember running that last rack. There was a lot of Austrian fans watching, pulling for their man, of course, at the Euro Tour in Austria. There was a lot of heat on that final rack. I could feel the pressure too, I'm telling you, but it was great to clear those balls and run that rack and put me in round number four. So in round four, I'm playing Tobias Bongers, who's having a really good, solid Euro Tour year. Young gun from Germany. And at the Euro Tour in Treviso, a few months back, where I was playing really, really good, breaking solid. I had to play him in the last 16. I had him 7-4. to four, And I, all I did from there was play one push out and two kick shots, and he beat me 9-7. So I went into the match really focused. This was the first match of the third day in the tournament a focus was super good performed really well won the match 9-4 good breaks good runouts and now a qualified for the final 32. there i drew another young gun of many that i played this event daniel Machol, sharpshooter from poland we just played in the uk open also last 16 round he beat me 11 to 9 there. I was sick of that one because I was playing really good that tournament. He got the best of me. Actually, in this match, I played my worst match of the event. I made a bunch of errors, but what kept me hanging in that match was I was breaking really, really well. And also, I was just battling with shot making, overcoming the mistakes I was making, staying mentally tough, self-talk, timeout just 
keep grinding till the end. And eventually on 8-8, Machol didn't quite hook me in the final rack. Left me a small jump, but super straight in, long, tough, jacked up shot. I had to fire it in, make that one, plus a tough five ball, run out to overcome all that, put me in the final 16. There was time for the next young gun on the list, Eklent Kachi. He just beat me in the last two Euro Tours, last 16 rounds, 9-7 and 9-7. Playing super solid, breaking and running out, five to six racks out of the match. The only advantage I had this time is that I just came out of a match, so I was warmed up versus the last two Euro Tours where it was the first match of the day at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. You're a little bit cold, rusty, you have to get going. And this time I just came out of a match fresh, I was in stroke, I was really focused, and I performed super good in this match. A lot of good shot making, overall solid performance, one of the better matches of the event for me. Beating Aikland 9-6 this time, putting me into the final day quarterfinals. There was time for the fourth young gun in a row, this time Viktor Selinski, also a red hot player from Poland, just winning a big 10 ball event in Vegas a few months ago, another Euro Tour win and runner up during the Predator event here last week in Germany. So I knew I had my work cut out once again, had to perform well. We played a close match going back and forth, good quality play. I had an 8-6, when I played a good solid safety, the nine was hanging in front of the pocket. I almost made it on the break and I played a good safe. Victor was faced with a tough situation. He opted for a jump shot. He had to cut it almost 80 degrees to the left, makes the ball and runs out. Plus he breaks and runs out. It was a dagger to the heart, but it's just solid, great play. There you see the level at the Euro Tour and on 8-8, all I could do was stay composed, break well, which I did. Didn't get a shot, but played a good safety. I knew I left a two-reel kick for Victor. If he would hit it really, really well, I would be in trouble. He hit it slightly too soft, left me a tough, long three ball. My options were pretty limited. I couldn't play a safety. And all I could see at that moment was a power stroke shot, draw it in full force to make the cue ball curve past the first side pocket and then draw back towards the middle diamond of the other long rail and just avoid that blocker there to get a shot on the four. That worked out and I ran the rack for a beautiful 9-8 victory and put me in the semi-final for the first time in a bunch of years. First it was time for a really long wait that morning match versus Victor was at 10 a.m. and the next one would be at 5.30. It was super hot in Austria those last days. So I couldn't really go to the swimming pool or for a walk because you just get too drained from the sun. I stayed in the room, did a bit of work, relaxed, had an early dinner, prepared for the match. And then it was time for another young gun, Mr. Zondoki. He's also really come along really well in the last couple of years, has a super solid break, nice compact game, nice composure, good match player. So I knew I had my work cut out once again. I jumped ahead 3-0 with good solid play. I should have made it 4-0, didn't. Match turn around, went 3-3 fast. I had to regain some composure and momentum. The good thing was the table was breaking fairly tough. So his break wasn't working very well. That meant there was a lot of play. I could put my stamp on the match and really turn it into some tactical battles now and then, gain the upper hand and win a bunch of racks in a row. 9-4 win and now for the first time in the final since a long time. My main focus was to cherish the moment and enjoy that I was playing really good pool. It was time for the last young gun on the list. Mr. Sanchez Ruiz, who's also having a fantastic year, runner up at the UK Open, multiple Euro Tour winner now, can't remember how many he's won in the last two years. And I knew he's breaking super, super big, tough guy to beat. I was mentally prepared for a lot of break and run outs. And in this match, I fell behind 3-1. But then once again, the table was breaking tough. 
So it wasn't easy for just an all-out break and run contest to the finish line. There was a lot of nice tactical battles, good shot making, and I was doing, fortunately, most of the breaking and running out in the end, turning this match around. for this final moment here on the nine. Yeah! It took me a second to realize from the seven to the nine that I was there it took so much effort to stay composed and super focused that I wasn't even ready to let it all out yet. I had to stay, keep it all together at first and then I realized, man, I'm there. I can let it out and you can see how much it means to me, this win, because it's pretty much a monkey off the back. I was waiting for this one a long time. I'm just super, super satisfied. Now I want to share with you the top four things that got me over that finish line. It got me from a struggling period on the Euro Tour back to having a trophy on my table with you. On number four, much overlooked, my fitness level overall. I'm playing youngsters that are half my age. I'm 45, but I have to be honest, it takes two of them to be just as fit as I am right here sitting with you. I've loved doing sports all my life. I'm always on the bike or working out in the garden if the weather's good. This makes me feel strong, fit, energized. It keeps my body in good health. When you're playing pool for a really long time, a lot of years, you're bending over, your back and your core have to stay really strong, especially when the years start counting and I'm as fit as I've ever been. And this gives me a great, powerful and confident feeling when I'm competing. It also gives me a chance to blow off some steam after matches perhaps that I've lost. It releases good, healthy hormones to get you back into balance and make you feel like a good quality human being. On number three, my preparation. I've shown more commitment to myself these last Euro tours and tournaments. I've been sparring more with my local partner, Mickey Kraus. We've been battling it out on many good occasions and this has given me a lot more rhythm in my matches. If you have a sparring partner that's about the same level, this really makes you more sharp and strong and it gives you a good head start when you enter the event. You don't have to get in stroke because you're already in stroke, also mentally super sharp from all that good practice. I've also been working more on my break. The break nowadays is just on the Euro Tour, unbelievably important. I feel if two players are about the same level, it's all about the break. Who gets the break down the fastest? Who's gonna break and run more racks? Nowadays on the Euro Tour, you see so many good breakers and it's just a vital part of your game. If you're not breaking well, you can just forget about it. You must have a good break. So you gotta keep practicing on it, keep that timing up. And I've been doing that more and more sessions and it's paying off. And then also combined with that break, mentally, I'm really preparing that when I'm playing these young guns, like catchy in the last few Euro tours, I have to mentally prepare that I'm gonna get at least five and break and runs against me. Anything less is a bonus, and that means I'm stepping to the table, I have something to say, even if it's a kick safety, I can return the favor, turn the match around, or that rack around at least, and I'm playing. So mentally I'm preparing for a bunch of racks in a row and anything less feels to me like a bonus. This helps me to stay composed. I'm not rattled when somebody's just clearing off rack after rack for a period. I have to stay with it. If I'm breaking good, I can do the same. And then when the pressure starts adding up towards the end, then it's a different story. Then on number two, my focus, this is really my weapon. And I'm not saying this in an arrogant way, but this is something that I'm just really good at for the last more than 20 years. 
I've been meditating since the year 2000. I personally choose to not be on the phone all the time. My maximum is about two hours, two and a half hours, sometimes a day when I have to do more work with my projects like the YouTube channel, answering some comments or comments via the social media perhaps. Uh, then I'm a bit more on the phone, but I choose to minimize it as much as possible because I really value my mental space. I don't want all these inputs all the time in my life and especially not for my focus for my pool game. Because of that, I'm able to focus really deep and that is my weapon. This is something that's becoming more and more rare in our world because everybody I feel is getting more and more distracted all the time from all the notifications, inputs, something that I don't agree with fully. And for example, this guy here, Cal Newport, he wrote a super good book, Deep Work, that deals about all those things little tips and tricks of how to get even deeper focus nice recommendation for people that are interested in that reading reading who does that nowadays right <laughs> get this copy really good there's this is just one book of the book list from the mental course another big book list in that one in the full mental edge for competitive pool players course check that one out i'll put a link here in the top and for example, during the tournament, one of the things I did also, check this out, I would just sit on the balcony and stare into the mountains there. The view is beautiful and I would just let my mind drift off and just digest all the things that were happening lately. If I had a busy period back home, I would just let it go, digest everything and after 30 minutes, maybe an hour, just have a cup of tea at the same time. I would be totally clear-minded, refreshed, and the focus I had in matches at some stages were so incredibly deep. Combine that with meditation, that's the next level for me. Deep, deep focus brings out the best execution and match play. So if that is also something that sounds inspiring to you, getting the clutter and all the distraction out of your mind, getting more control over your focus and your attention, less is more in my personal world, then check out also the mental foundation course where I go deeper into this stuff, something that could really benefit you as a competitive pool player. And finally, on number one, the biggest key to it all, you've got to be hungry. I came home, from the World Cup of Pool and I told my wife, I'm sick of it. I'm playing good pool. I got last 16 at the Euro Tour, last 16 at the US Open, losing 9-7, 11-9. Mark and me played really good at the World Cup of Pool, but again, we lost in the quarters, 9-8. I came home, I said, I'm sick and tired of it. I want to win. And that made me extra hungry, just extra committed, extra focused to go out there and extra tough mentally to get the job done and get over the finish line i didn't want another story where oh i got a bad roll in the end or i missed the ball i wanted to bust through every door to get that win and get this guy back home if you're hungry and if you're on a mission and if you're focused and not distracted all the time you are gonna be a dangerous person to beat i can promise you that because if you're always knocking on the door, boom, 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 let me through, let me through. One of those days, the pool gods up there are going to say, man, what is that noise? What is this guy there banging on this door? Maybe it's time that we open this door and give him a little hand. And maybe you're going to get an extra roll here and there. Or you're going to come with that super big shot when it matters most on 8-8. Because you know what? You're hungry and in the back of your mind and in your heart, You've done the work and you feel that you deserve it. So pool friends, that was the story behind the success in Austria. Now it's your time. Get decluttered, get your attention on track, take care of your energy, be hungry. And what is the next goal that you wanna achieve? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out all the other great content on the channel. There's tips and tricks here uploaded weekly for you. And remember, like we just spoke about, if you're interested to do more mental work, I just explained that that's the most important part of the game, 
head over to the Terminator College, join many hundreds that are there already, check out the courses that are just waiting there for you. See you in the next episode.